Beneath the beautiful, clear waters of the Philippines' western coast lies a hidden, terrifying force of nature. Silent, immense, and deadly. However, if unleashed, it could bring destruction to millions of Filipinos. This is the Manila Trench. Although this isn't as widely known as California's San Andreas Fault, it may possess the power to trigger one of the deadliest earthquakes of our time. What level of destruction could this fault unleash that earns it a place among the most dangerous seismic zones on Earth? To truly grasp the scale of the threat and how to confront it, we must first understand what makes this corner of the world so uniquely volatile. The Manila Trench is a prominent 1,500 kilometers oceanic feature located in the Western Pacific, just off the coasts of Luzon and Mindoro in the Philippines. This subduction zone reaches depths of approximately 5,400 meters. To grasp just how deep that is, consider this. The average depth of the nearby South China Sea is about 1,500 meters. That means the Manila Trench dives more than three times deeper. In fact, if you dropped the entire Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building at 830 meters, into the trench, it would disappear seven times over with room to spare. This subduction zone acts as the underlying force behind much of the seismic unrest in the region. It also powers a volcanic chain along Luzon's western flank, including the infamous Mount Pinatubo. In 1991, Pinatubo unleashed one of the most powerful eruptions of the 20th century. The eruption was so intense that it transformed the surrounding terrain and disrupted global climate patterns, lowering temperatures worldwide and casting a veil of ash across the atmosphere for months. What troubles scientists most isn't the tremors, it's the long, unsettling silence. For centuries, this fault line has remained dormant. But that stillness is far from reassuring. In fact, it's precisely this quiet that raises red flags, leading experts to rank it among the most dangerous fault lines in the world. Given the immense tectonic forces grinding deep below, it's deeply unsettling how the Manila Trench has remained eerily silent. In fact, since Spanish records began in the 1560s, not a single earthquake stronger than magnitude 7.6 has struck along this fault. This quiet stretch is what scientists call a seismic gap, a part of the fault that's been holding its breath, locked tight, and building pressure for far longer than it should. To put this into perspective, imagine you're pulling back a slingshot and keeping it stretched for hours. The tension grows stronger and stronger, and eventually, even the smallest slip could send it snapping forward with devastating power. That's the invisible strain quietly gathering beneath the Manila Trench. The pressure from this relentless buildup of tectonic energy is immense, and when it eventually lets go, the devastation could be overwhelming. So, how severe could the devastation be to have experts genuinely fearful of its consequences? Recent research suggests that certain segments of the trench have the potential to trigger megaquakes as powerful as magnitude 8.4, or even beyond 9. The real danger of these earthquakes goes beyond their sheer strength, it's their ability to set off devastating tsunamis. For a country made up of thousands of islands like the Philippines, this scenario is a chilling reality. Violent shaking that's quickly followed by powerful waves crashing onto the shore with little to no warning. It's a deadly double blow that could overpower even the best prepared regions. Computer simulations paint a grim warning. In the worst case scenario, tsunami waves from a Manila Trench megaquake could slam into western Philippine coastlines within 15 to 30 minutes. That's barely enough time to realize what's happening, let alone escape. In those critical moments, every second would be a matter of life or death. Models predict tsunami waves soaring between 3 and over 10 meters across parts of western Luzon, including Palawan and Mindoro. Then, there's Metro Manila, one of the world's densest megacities with over 15 million people. The violent shaking alone could bring this capital to its knees. Much of its infrastructure, especially older buildings, was built long before modern earthquake-resistant codes. At the same time, millions in the city live in informal settlements built from fragile makeshift materials. A powerful earthquake could reduce these structures to rubles in seconds, displacing countless families in an instant. But the devastation wouldn't stop at homes. It would tear through the lifelines of daily life, knocking out essentials like electricity and water. 
power grids could collapse within moments, casting entire regions into darkness, and with no electricity, water systems would fail too, cutting off access when people need it most. Critical infrastructure like bridges and highways could give way under the stress, severing key escape routes and delaying emergency response. The economic impact would be astounding. As a key player in Southeast Asia's growing economy, the Philippines could face a sudden standstill, businesses shuttered, trade disrupted, and vital industries brought to their knees. As one of the titans of the global business process outsourcing industry, the impact won't stop at local borders. When disaster strikes, customer service operations supporting some of the world's biggest brands will be thrown into disarray. Yet beyond the staggering monetary cost lies a far deeper, immeasurable tragedy. It's the lives that will be lost, the families torn from their homes, and the sorrow that no amount of aid can ever mend. For those who remain, the ache of losing loved ones will become a permanent shadow. With all these grim scenarios, the question now is, how can the Philippines ready itself to reduce the devastation when the Manila Trench finally ruptures? With all the modern technologies that are now available to us, you might think that it's now easier to predict when it will happen. But sadly, this remains one of nature's most closely guarded secrets. Scientists can detect the mounting pressure beneath the Earth's crust and pinpoint the fault lines ready to rupture. Yet the question of when still eludes even the brightest minds. Preparedness. This is still the best weapon in our hands. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, known as FIVOLCS, is the country's lead agency in monitoring and responding to natural hazards like volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and tsunamis. They've installed a quiet network of GPS stations that are constantly at work, picking up the tiniest shifts in the Earth's crust, so small they're almost impossible to feel. Meanwhile, satellites high above are watching too, tracking subtle changes in the shape of the land around the Manila Trench. Together, these tools are giving scientists a clearer picture, helping them understand just how serious the threat really is. Through rigorous studies, scientists have learned that the Manila Trench tends to break in cycles that can last hundreds or even over a thousand years. That means we might be closer to the next big one than we realize. What's even more worrying is that the Manila Trench isn't working alone. It's connected to a tangled web of fault lines running through the islands. If a megaquake hits the trench, it could trigger these other faults too, setting off a chain reaction that impacts a wide region. For years, the Philippines has focused its preparations on the big one, a powerful magnitude 7.2 earthquake projected to hit the West Valley Fault. However, as scientists warned, the potential rupture of the Manila Trench could trigger an even more destructive seismic event. Even with constrained resources, the Philippine government is taking decisive action. Refusing to be caught unprepared, it has stepped up investments in disaster response and healthcare infrastructure. They're building the resilience needed to face a potentially catastrophic earthquake head-on. Central to this preparation is reinforcing the strength of buildings. Stricter building codes have been implemented to ensure new constructions can withstand strong quakes, while many older buildings have been retrofitted to improve their resilience and protect lives when disaster strikes. But no plan can succeed without something deeper, a culture of preparedness that runs through every person, every family, every business, and every government agency. In true Filipino fashion, even in the shadow of danger, there's a spark of hope. And now, a glimmer of opportunity. What was once seen only as a source of devastation, the Manila Trench, has revealed a surprising secret. Scientists from the University of the Philippines have uncovered something extraordinary beneath its depths. Gas hydrates. These are crystal-like formations made of water and methane, a highly flammable gas used as fuel. Preliminary research reveals that an area spanning around 15,400 square kilometers, comparable to the size of Palawan, may be hiding a substantial reserve of gas hydrates buried just 200 to 500 meters below the seafloor. For a consumption-driven economy in search of sustainable energy solutions, this concealed resource holds the potential to revolutionize the country's energy landscape. The potential windfall from this hidden energy source could do more than boost the economy. It could power a national transformation. With the right investment, 
these revenues could drive the development of cutting-edge technologies and critical infrastructure to help the country brace for the moment the Manila Trench finally ruptures. Because if there's one thing history has proven, it's that Filipinos don't just endure adversity, they rise to meet it head-on. Time and again, in the face of nature's most brutal trials, their spirit doesn't falter. It shines even brighter. Surrounded by breathtaking landscapes that both challenge and inspire, they draw strength from the very soil that shakes beneath them. No matter how many times they fall, they rise stronger, every single time. Over 300 years ago, a catastrophic earthquake shook the northwest coast of America, causing widespread fires and triggering a massive tsunami that claimed the lives of thousands and sent hundreds of settlements underwater. This disaster was the result of Cascadia, a subduction zone where two tectonic plates converge. Every 250 years, there is a shift in Cascadia that results in an earthquake with a magnitude greater than 8. And now, it's happening again. Unlike other earthquakes that are often preceded by inexplicable light flashes in the sky or small tremors in the volcano's vicinity, Cascadia does not give any warning signs. In fact, until the end of the last century, geologists were unaware of the danger posed by this zone. Join us as we dive deeper into this ominous warning given by scientists. Scientists from Oregon State University discovered that the Juan de Fuca plate, which was supposed to descend beneath the North American plate and slide smoothly, got stuck. The pressure between the two plates is increasing, and it's only a matter of time before all that stored energy is released. The probability of an earthquake over the next 50 years is 1 in 3, but there's also a possibility that it could happen in the next couple of years. The disaster will affect the entire Pacific Northwest, including the states of Oregon, Washington, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, and Northern California. While no one can predict exactly when this will happen, residents are advised to always be prepared and alert. This is because a few minutes of extra caution could potentially save lives. Right before an earthquake, animals such as dogs and mice exhibit strange behavior, like howling and running away, respectively. This is because they have the ability to perceive vibrations that humans can't. Their reactions indicate that the first seismic wave has passed and an earthquake is imminent, with residents of Montana and Wyoming, the more distant states from Cascadia, having about six minutes to evacuate to the east. Moving in the opposite direction, towards the edge of the tectonic plate, could result in the creation of a 960-kilometer-long tsunami that could travel at a speed of 19 kilometers per hour. In 1700, a similar tectonic event occurred, causing a massive tsunami that traveled 10,000 kilometers and slammed into the coast of Japan. The water flooded rice fields and caused fires that destroyed buildings. The tsunami was called the Orphan Tsunami because its cause was not understood. This time around, there won't be any time for romantic images, as the earthquake will cause the destruction of thousands of homes, severe fires, landslides, and dam failures. To prepare for such an event, authorities encourage residents to follow the Two Weeks Ready Plan. This involves every family having a set of essential items, such as food, clothing, and medicine, to survive in extreme conditions for two weeks and wait for necessary assistance or evacuation. To use this survival kit, one must first survive the shaking of the earthquake in their own home. To do this, heavy and large items should be moved to the floor or low shelves, and all items that could potentially fall should be removed. Escape routes and doorways should be kept clear of any obstructions, such as furniture, and safety latches should be installed on kitchen cabinets. It's crucial to be prepared, as the devastating earthquake in Northridge, California, in 1994, resulted in thousands of injuries and several deaths, with over 50% of the injuries caused by falling furniture or objects. Only 1% of the injuries were caused by building damage. If you live in Oregon, the epicenter of the event, it's even more important to take the necessary precautions. If you're in the epicenter of an earthquake, it's important to know what to do, the first step is to drop, cover, and hold. This means that you should get down on your hands and knees, cover your head and neck, and crawl under a table if possible, 
or hold on to something sturdy. When the shaking stops, you should leave the building. What you see outside can be devastating. Thousands of buildings will be either demolished or consumed by flames. In Oregon, there are large stockpiles of fuel, not only for the state, but also for southwest Washington. Fuel tanks will deform and leak, and any spark will be enough to start a fire. The number of tsunami victims can reach over 70,000 people in winter and over 150,000 in summer. Everyone who doesn't have time to escape, leave or go to higher ground will die, and over 160,000 square kilometers will be flooded. If you think that nothing worse could happen, think again. What if the Cascadia Fault is not the end? The disaster in Cascadia could start a chain reaction. You may have heard of the San Andreas Fault. It's a continental transform fault between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, extending roughly 1,200 kilometers. It runs along the coast of California, mostly over land. The San Andreas has caused many earthquakes that reached a magnitude of over 9, the most famous being the San Francisco earthquake of 1906. As a result of the earthquake and subsequent fires, up to 3,000 people died, and about 300,000 people were left homeless. 80% of the buildings were destroyed. The earthquake was accompanied by surface fault rupture along the San Andreas Fault, with strike-slip displacements measured up to 8.5 meters. The most important thing to note is that the San Andreas Fault merges with the plate boundary of the Cascadia subduction zone north of Cape Mendocino. Researchers recently decided to test whether they affect one another, and it turned out that over the last 3,000 years, a massive earthquake in Cascadia led to the rupture of the San Andreas Fault from 9 to 11 times. This means that when Cascadia gets hit by an earthquake, the San Andreas will follow. Earthquakes will follow one after another, triggering a tsunami, and this time the devastation will spread over an extensive territory from Canada to Mexico. You may think that the catastrophe will only affect the northwest coast of America, but take a good look at the map. Cascadia lies within the so-called Ring of Fire, a string of volcanoes, some of which are best not woken up, like Yellowstone. Its super eruption would equal the force of 1,000 Hiroshima atomic bombs exploding every second. But what are your thoughts about this? If you love our story, don't forget to subscribe to be part of our community. As always, until the next one.